the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everyone overcome. Oh, yes, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes, everyone.
all glory and all honor to you and you alone. You are the king of glory. Come and fill this temple. Come and fill our hearts. Let your name be high and lifted up in this place and high and lifted up in our hearts. Let it be high and lifted up across this land. There is none like you. It's you and you alone. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify your name. Let everything we say, everything we do, let it bring glory and honor to your name. And this night birth with us, within us a fresh anointing to worship you, to praise you, to lift your name up. Father, you ordained us and you purposed us for worship. Let there be a fresh anointing and an open heaven to worship you continually. Wherever we go and whatever we do, let us bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give uh, Helena and the worship team from uh, uh, the gathering place a great big hand. We sure appreciate the worship team from the gathering place, but you know, every one of our churches has phenomenal worship teams, just tremendous. And the, the anointing is a, 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 and the style may be a little different, but the strength of the anointing and the desire to worship is on the Eagle Worldwide worship teams. If you're here and you're part of one of the Eagle Worldwide worship teams, just stand up for us now. We want to give you a hand. If you're on any one of the worship teams at Eagle Worldwide, we just want to give you a great big hand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I assume you're here tonight because you have an understanding and you're looking for honor's reward in this new year, and so are we at Eagle Worldwide. And you know, if we're going to look for honor's reward, then I want to give honor where honor is due. And there are a lot of people that are in the room tonight that play a very big role and part in what happens in Eagle Worldwide Ministries. I want you to know that it's not about one person, two people, or even a small team that gathers together, but there are people just all across this nation who really partner together to make Eagle Worldwide what it really is. People that really dedicated their lives and themselves to the ministry, to the vision, to the mission that God has put on our heart, to bring revival fire to the nations, to bring five-fold ministry expression, and to, to build this apostolic and prophetic work that he's called us to. And so far, we've birthed uh, like nine churches across, across southern Ontario, and many of them are here tonight. They're, they're uh, pastors and that that are here. So I want to really honor them because they're very key people. How many of you know pastor got a tough job? You know? Well, Brother Russ can blow in, blow up, and blow out, but the pastor got to stay behind and clean up the mess. So I thank God for all the pastors, man. We have some really wonderful ones here. And the first church that we birthed at Eagle Worldwide Ministries, my first baby, was actually the gathering place in Aurora. And their pastors are brother and sister to me and have been a tremendous blessing to us all here at Eagle Worldwide. Let's give John and Victoria Irving a great big hand. They're wonderful. And if you're here now from the gathering place, stand up if you're from the gathering place. Let's give them a great big hand. Amen. Man. And uh, from, from our downtown work here in, in Hamilton, uh, from the Revival Center, Pastor Patty and Pastor Alex Wallace, let's give them a great big hand. And if you're here from the Revival Center, stand up. Let's hear from you now. Stand up if you're from the Revival Center. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give them a great big hand. From the nest in Ancaster, Derek and Joanna Adams. Let's give them a hand. Hallelujah. Woo! Ken and Barbie. If you're from the nest, stand up now. I want to give you a hand now. Come on. All right. From the Six Nations, I know Mark and Jeanette are, are, are away now up north and visiting with family there. They're still not back yet. But if you're here from the Six Nations Church, Let's give them a great big hand and Mark and Jeanette Goudreau. (laughs) 
Also, we have a group here with us from Caleb's Place up in Aurelia. Let's give them a hand, Mark and Wendy Winston. Our church in Toronto, this is Glory House, Pastor Angelo Marino. There's Pastor Angelo down there. And this group, if you're from this Glory House, stand up there for us. Come on now, let's hear from them. Glory to God. A lot of them back there. And uh, from Burlington, Pastor uh, Mary, Pastor Vince, Pastor Nelly, Pastor Herschel, the whole gang from Ignite Burlington, let's stand up and give them a great big hand. Glory to God. And we got our, our newest addition to the family. We have quite a few people here from the New York Nest, from the Nest of Buffalo, Niagara. Let's have them stand up. Pastor Wendy, Pastor Chad, Pastor Maeve, huh? Give them a great big hand. Hallelujah. Good to have you here with us. We're right now in the birthing process of our next church here in southern Ontario that the Lord has led us by revelation to and dreams and visions. And we're getting ready now, probably here in the spring, to launch our next church, which is going to be called Saturday Night Live. And it's going to be at Port Dover. Let's give a great big hand. If you're here from that church launch group, let's stand up. Let's hear it from you now. Whoa, from Sydney in the back and Don and Caroline. Yeah. And, you know, the Lord gave us the name and Saturday Night Live. And, you know, uh, and it said to Pastor Maeve, this is not your mama's church. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? You know, we have some other ministries that are right at the core of Eagle Worldwide Ministries that, you know what, every one of our churches that partner together, that are in covenant together, we all have a Bible school and a full-time Bible school, and we have the, uh, we also have a, a seasonal Bible school and night school and all different ways right now that we're presenting ways to equip and, to, and empower the saints, and that's with Spirit Ministries Training Center. Let's have uh, uh, Pastor Wendy stand up and Pastor Miguel Simon, they're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group. They're just tremendous. And our outreach center in downtown Hamilton, the Kingsway Center, right there they feed about 200 people a day, seeing people get saved all the time, getting delivered, set free by the power of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. A bunch of them that are volunteers there now came in off the street and they, they, and they just, they've turned now into a wonderful group of ministers. And there are many of you here tonight. But let's start off first with Renee and Shelly Clement. Let's give them a great big hand. And also for the lay zone from the ministry, Pastor Patty Thorpe from Wallace. Let's give her a great big hand. If you're here from the Kingsway, why don't you stand up for us? We want to give you a great big hand. If you're a volunteer here, come on now, there's a whole lot of you here. Wonderful. Right now, there's a couple of projects that are going on down there, and we, we love everyone that sows into the vision and to the hope that God has, but particularly to sow into those areas like what's going on at the Kingsway downtown. And right now, a couple of families have gotten together, and uh, they're doing renovations down there to the kitchen, putting a full industrial kitchen in there. Just a beautiful, beautiful thing that's happening. We want to thank the Snydman family and also uh, uh, Brady Financial and the Brady Bunch, Kevin Brady. Let's give them all a great big hand. <laughs> Pastor Herschel has helped to moderate the whole thing. A wonderful, wonderful blessing. Just a great blessing. And many of you know, many of you are here during winter camp and summer camp. When we, uh, sometimes when we're up on our campground that's out here on Highway 52, it's a big work and it's a lot of work. And it takes a lot of people really partnering together to make it happen out there at camp. We're looking forward to our best camp ever this year at the campground during the summer. But we're also going to be here in April, April 5th to the 15th. We're going to be right here in this room doing spring camp, Kingdom Now, with Pastor Jane Louder and 
lots of other guest speakers that will be in. So it will be a great time for you to come out and to visit with us. But you know, the campground is a big work, and a tremendous amount of time and energy and effort is put in there. Let's give Reed and Victoria Grassi a great big hand. And if you help at the campground, Robert, Linda, and everybody that helps at the campground, why don't you stand up? Thank you very much. So many of you. You're really, really wonderful. I, I want you to know that you challenge me each and every each and every week and every month and every morning when I wake up, I thank God for you because I know the work that you do, the price that you pay, the sacrifices that you make to serve the Lord, and I appreciate every one of you. You know, there are a lot of other people in the room that we really want to honor today. If you're a pastor here tonight, if you're a pastor not just from one of our churches, but any church around, if you're a pastor or a leader in the room, we'd just like you to stand up. We want to honor all the pastors. Pastor Efron, his group. Hello, Pastor Matthew from up at, the, uh, up at Capital City Church in Ottawa. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's wonderful to have you here with us. We have some friends with us from New York and Niagara Falls on the U.S. side. We were just down there for a Niagara uh, night watch. Let's give them a great big hand, Bernie and Jesse. Give them a hand. Go and stand up for us, gang. Come on, come on. We're believing God that in 2013 that he's going to give us an outreach center just like the Kingsway and the Center for Excellence that's able to empower people to, to reach their destiny and to answer their call, people that have really struggled. And we believe that that center on the U.S. side is going to be in Niagara Falls, New York. Let's give them folks a great big hand. And we're believing for Niagara Falls. I know that there are a lot of other folks that are here, and we'd like to honor all of you, but, you know, these are the people that really have put a whole lot into what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. There is a group that's right at the hub of what Eagle Worldwide does that, that actually do the logistics for everything that happens here and setting up the place and, you know, doing the contracts, taking care of all the arrangements for people to fly in, where they're staying, where they're going, all the speakers, Believe it or not, this thing just doesn't happen by itself. <laughs> Even though we like to think it does, it just doesn't do that. And the people that are really involved in that are the people that are at the hub and at the core group of what we do at Eagle Worldwide Ministries. First of all, the vice president of Eagle Worldwide Ministries is around here somewhere, Pastor Miguel Simon. There he is in the back, the bishop. He's a good brother. He is a good brother. And I want to tell you, man, that brother can make some burritos. <laughs> That's from an expert point of view. I had a couple for Christmas. It was good to me. <laughs> and there's a whole core group inside, and the person that heads up the administration, I know she connects with so many of you, and she does so much of you. She's been my personal assistant now for about eight years and works with me on a daily basis and puts up with a lot of my nonsense. Let's give Pastor Patty Thorpe Wallace a great big hand. If you're part of her internal team, and uh, if you're in accounting or you're in logistics or you're in the, uh, Linda Cove, who does all of the, and the media department in the back, why don't all you guys stand up that are at the hub? Pastor Nelly, yeah, Chad, our accounting department, what a great group. And they're the people that you connect with, and they're there on a day-to-day -day basis really working this thing out and making it really happen. It actually takes a whole lot of behind-the-scenes things in order for this to really happen. But you know, tonight we came to have a nice meal and some good fellowship, but how many of you came tonight to hear the word of the Lord? <laughs> and certainly to bring in a new year. And I want to bring in the new year, but there's probably a lot of us in the room tonight that not only want to bring in the new year, but they're glad to see 2012 go bye-bye. How many of you want to wave bye-bye to 2012? Goodbye, 2012. Something new, something better, something greater, something grander is going to happen. And we have quite a few people. And so, you know, some of the folks that you're going to hear from tonight, you're going to hear them just a five or, five or seven-minute prophetic word about 
you know, what God laid on their heart for the new year. But many of them are pastors and leaders and traveling ministers. So you're going to be hearing from them all year long. You're going to hear them preach from the prophetic word that comes tonight. Because for the last month or so, we have been really seeking the Lord for what his word is in the new year. You can go back and see what we've been like and see what our track record's like on our website. And, you know, tonight you saw a lot of things happen while you're here. But on our website at www.eagleworldwide.com, you can go back and you'll be able to see this, uh, this service and this meeting together on the website. And we do a lot of uh, video streaming and all the other things that go with media. Right now we're getting ready to put in place a, a social media ministry that's going to have an impact around the world. How many of you believe that social media has a place of impact in the kingdom? So we're right now. Let's give the people in media and the sound men, no more messing around, give them a big hand. Come on back there, Mr. Ian, that whole group. Isaiah, you guys are wonderful. What a great blessing you are, too. And, you know, we, some people do it with a lot of money and things behind them. But, you know, every church that we birth, we birth without any outside involvement, no money coming from any other source. The funding for Eagle Worldwide comes strictly from the partners and friends of Eagle Worldwide Ministries. Many of you are here tonight. If you're a silver or gold or President's Club partner, if you're a partner of any type, uh, a pathway partner with Eagle Worldwide Ministries, I'd just like you to stand up so we can recognize you, our partner. Okay. Let's give him a great big hand. Thank you. We really appreciate you. You know, sometimes we go to camp and we see how wonderful it is during summer camp when we have our services from the middle of July all the way through Labor Day. But you know what? When the lights go out, north winds blows and, and blows out all the lights that are there, the bill keeps coming in every month even though we're not there. And the thing that makes it happen month in and month out are the people that partner together with us on a monthly basis. They help us with the Kingsway and they help us with the campground. If you'd like information on how you can be a partner with Eagle Worldwide, it can happen for as little as a dollar a day. You can partner with us to make Eagle Worldwide the kind of ministry that, that, that God has ordained in the vision. If you'd like a package, just lift your hand and we'll have one of our ushers drop you off a package. If you'd like a package and be a partner with Eagle Worldwide, just lift your hand. You can do that for as little as a dollar a day. It's an information package. Take it home. Pray over a little bit. See how God would lead you. And we're, we're just happy to have our partners. Because I'll tell you what, that's what makes it happen on a monthly basis. It's really a great blessing to have you. I'm going to start off here tonight with the prophetic word the Lord laid on my heart for 2013. This is the year that the prodigals are coming home. It is a year that we'll see the world again in a chaotic state, but the true church of Jesus Christ will begin to draw closer together. He will begin to separate the sheep from the goat into the end time alignment that he ordained. You will begin to clearly see this in both the natural and in the spirit. A worldwide shift and a worldwide change in leadership and a new breed of leader is rising up in different realms of influence in our society, and they are taking their rightful place on the worldwide stage, the world will begin to experience more and more moments of anarchy, chaos, and confusion. But this will be the year of divine order and spiritual alignment for the true church of Jesus Christ. While all this confusion and change and chaos is going on, you're going to begin to see God begin to draw his people together. There'll be an ingathering of eagles before there goes a launching. There'll certainly be a falling away in the end time, and we're going to begin to see that now. For this is the season that he prophesied about, that even the elect, if they can be, will be deceived. This is the time to stand on the word of God, know what you're called to, have an understanding of relationship, and he's going to begin to draw the hearts of his people close together. In the midst of the chaos, the blessing is coming our way. This is the time for the true church to align. They will begin to fill the, blo to fill the void, and people in North America are going to begin to draw a line in the sand, once again taking a stance for morality and integrity. They're going to make their voices heard, and they are going to demand action and change. In South America and in the Spanish-speaking nations, four major changes in leadership will happen and happen quickly. 
the Spanish-speaking community in the United States will begin to flex its muscle and extend its influence into every fiber of the U.S. culture. An increase in, immigra in immigration of the Spanish-speaking people will happen both in Canada and in the United States, particularly in the building trades and in settling some of the current immigration issues in the United States that will have a display of both compassion and reason. I had a dream and where I saw a group of Aboriginal leaders all around a table and they were meeting with government officials. They were passing around papers and envelopes and all of them seemed to be standing up. I feel like this will be a year where many unresolved issues concerning land, treaties, and financial disputes will finally be put to rest. It's a time and a season now for the First Nations and the Inuit people to press in for closure. The healing is in progress, but it's time now for closure and the beginning of a new season of unity and harmony to spring forth. This is a time when hidden treasures are going to be revealed in both the natural and in the spirit, and also things that have been hidden in the hearts of men and in the hearts of nations will be revealed. Revealed for all to see, the greatest treasures that will be uncovered will not have anything to do with precious metals or even hidden gems. Although that will continue to happen, particularly in the north, but there's going to be an uncovering and a revealing of the creative, natural, business strengths of the people. As they begin to step higher and higher and deeper and deeper into self-rule, taking their rightful place on the world stage, great interest in both the Arctic and the Antarctic for exploration and resource development. And this interest will bring with it the accompanying wealth generation and much opportunity, but it'll also be a call for true and new leadership and educational training that will position them to take advantage of the new opportunities that will come both to the Arctic and to the Antarctic. In Canada, migration shall continue to increase both to the west and to the north. Another bright year for Canada in finance and the spread of trade and commerce to the emerging nations, including China, India, South America, and the Middle East. The relationship within Israel will begin to bear fruit and even to produce financial gain but there will be much opposition and persecution even from within. Canada is becoming the new working model of democracy around the world. I saw a pot boiling on the stove and it starts to overheat. And now I take off the lid and I lower the heat and I come back a little while and I put the lid back on, thinking now it's gonna be okay. But suddenly and very quickly it began to boil again. And I knew that it wasn't going to take much. Then it seemed like I was in a small flying plane, a plane that I didn't understand what it looked like. I couldn't tell if it was an animal, a drone, a plane, but I knew it had some military significance and I was flying real low over a body of water. And then as I began to go through there, I knew I was flying over the Mediterranean and over some of the very hot spots around the world. And I realized that we thought we were fixing things, but we were only putting a Band-Aid on them and that these things were going to boil up again and boil up quickly, and that these hot spots were going to come alive in 2013, and that we're going to have to begin to really position ourselves, even militarily, to be able to defend the freedom that we live by around the world. It's a time not to step back, but a time to press in. It's a time now for us to stand in faith and begin to draw the line and to begin to stand up for morality, integrity in North America, in this nation, and in the United States. It's no more a time for a quick fix, but it's time to get things done. Some of the boiling points in the Mediterranean were Greece and Italy, Portugal and Spain. In South America, more and more violence and a great deal of change. Change in leadership in three, in three nations within six months. And in the Middle East, more change and more trouble, exposing the hearts and the motives, the hidden motives of the hearts of the people. Continual flare-ups and unstable atmosphere, even in the United States, will have them sending a mixed and confusing message that's adding to the problem and trying to avoid and sidestep the real and the true issues that are confronting us as a world on the world scene. Russia will show her true colors and will come into even a closer alignment now with Iran and with China. And you're gonna to begin to see the sheep and the goat nations begin to separate and begin to come into a spiritual alignment because we're getting closer and closer to that end time moment. In the Far East, China, India, Japan, Korea, governments start to feel the pressure of their newfound influence 
and weaknesses in their infrastructure are going to begin to surface. Changes in leadership and in the balance of power in each of these nations. In Eagle Worldwide Ministries in 2013, supernatural, exponential growth and development. The new generation of leadership steps into place, spreading their wings and beginning to soar. Babies having babies, the reaper overtakes the sower. Two new church births and, a new, and new growth comes from within and from without. Birth pains are going to be forgotten, for this is the hour for the intercessors to begin to bring forth. And as the mother brings forth the child, she forgets the pain that she had in childbirth. Many of you have been going through a very painful season in your own life, in your own heart, in the destiny call that's on you. Some of you that were called to bring kingdom wealth have had a great deal of opposition, even in the area of their finances. This is an opportunity right now for God to begin to birth something new in us, and we're going to forget the painful moments of the past as we press into that new season in the heart of God. Now is the season where the call is going out to the builders and to the hunters, to the fishers of men. Breakthroughs on all sides and on every front. New practical training centers are going to be opened in the north and in the west. Apostolic connections and networks connecting to other networks based on relationship, heart to heart, spirit to spirit, with a kingdom view and a kingdom vision. Bring your boots. We're all getting some new marching orders. This is an hour now to bring your own boots. He's changing the direction of the church. He's calling us to march forth. He's calling us to go forth in the power and the authority that he's given us. But this is a time now to bring your boots because you get new marching orders. 2013 is going to see people launched into their destiny call. Arise and shine for your hours has come, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. This was the Lord spoke to me. Time to arise and let my glory be seen. It's the year of my manifest presence, 2013. My glory will overtake you and be with you as you go. The fullness of my presence you shall truly come to know. And my people will realize they don't have to work it up for me. Just move in my spirit and be. My dreamers will arise and stand before kings. They will speak to those in authority and reveal the hidden things. For many will dream dreams without the understanding today, and my people will arise and show them the way. It's a year of restoration, reconciliation, and grace. Those who have been holding offense will become willing to let go and erase. And this year, they'll make the sacrifice of forgiving no matter the cost. They'll move in resolution and recover what's been lost. There will be seven years of plenty as the Joseph anointing settles in. While the world suffers lack and loss, my children will rise and win. And others shall look upon you as you set the table with a feast. And my blessing shall be upon you from the greatest to the least. Woo! Yeah. A great season of provision for those walking in my way. Those willing and obedient will eat the good of the land today. Anxiety will be upon the people as they trust in their own will. Fear and phobias will operate in the world and loss They'll have their fill. Anarchy and disobedience will run, rampart in the, will run rampart in the world. Chaos and destruction as judgment is unfurled. My shaking shall continue as depression and financial loss has its way. The world will spiral downward as my people arise and have their say. For this is a year of walking in authority, of taking your rightful place, of speaking to plagues and viruses and moving in God's grace. Keeping your eyes in the, on the signs and things that are happening in the land. Remember, you have the authority and in faith you must take a stand. For this year the body will come together, each operating in their gift and way. And all will be important and all will have their say. For each member is significant, a living stone in the house of the Lord, and when we move in unity, we will never be ignored. 
God will continue his shaking in the body, and many hidden things shall be revealed. Many hearts will be mended, and many will be healed. It's a year of supernatural suddenlies and revival rivers with fires that shine. There will be a refreshing, and my people shall be refined. Mark 7, 21 to 22 will be the scripture of the hour. As many practice these evils, the enemy will devour. And unspeakable crimes in neighborhoods, as sins are tolerated and received, many will believe the lie, many will be deceived. But this is the time for my children to truly rise and shine. The year of 2013, come on church, get in line. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. The Lord told me that 2013 would be a year of recovery. Recovery. And the Lord brought me to scripture where David, in 1 Samuel 30 and 18, where David recovered all. Do you remember that story when they came and raided the camp and they took the wives and they burnt everything down? But the Lord, uh, David inquired of the Lord and the Lord said, go, go. And they recovered everything and all the wives and the children were fine. But they also got all the spoil. All the spoil. And then David took that spoil and he began to honor those where he would go with his men, they took them in, they let them stay on the land. He went to the leaders of those lands and he gave them some of that spoil. The Lord said, it's a year of recovery. Recovery was coming in the marketplace, in government, and in your relationships. He told me that 2013 was a year where our dreams are going to become reality. I saw a vision of wind, and it was the Lord's wind, and it was behind our backs. And it was blowing us and propelling us into our destinies. He told me emerging leaders, uncommon leaders, and uncommon favor. Launches. He told me launches. I saw people being shot out of cannons. And as we were being shot out of cannons, when enough of us were up there, we began to unify ourselves. And it's almost like we were skydivers. And we were making these patterns in the air. And unity was being released. And he told me that he's releasing kingdom perspective of unity. Whoo! And, and I heard him say for Canada, great favor over Canada and our prime minister. And that Canada, Canada is going to continue to shine on the world stage. And for Eagle Worldwide Ministries, he told me realignment. Change, change, change. Not to be afraid of change. And that flexibility and doing things different would be a requirement for great success. Amen. The Lord woke me up, and I was asking him for a word, and he woke me up with the song, Joy to the World. He said, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare. This is going to be a year for preparing for the Lord because the, the bride is coming, and we're on the very threshold of the wedding of the Lamb. And he says he's coming, but not quite yet a little while because just like John, the Baptist prepared a way for the Lord to come. It's time for us to prepare the way for the Lord to come. It's a time to stand for what's true and for what's right. It's time to call our friends and the people around us to a place of repentance and to be sorry for our sins. <clears throat> he said, it's time to call the people. Yes, <laughs> like John the Baptist. He also said that um, there will be peace in Israel at the beginning of the year, but that there is unrest brewing underneath, and that it's going to come out and it's going to explode throughout the year at different times. He said there will be more natural disasters. In the song it says, the trees of the field, all the nature will sing because the Lord's return is coming and they're getting ready. Nature is getting ready and the disasters that are going to come are going to be an opportunity for us to speak the word of the Lord. So in the middle of disaster, in the middle of trouble, in the middle of the problems, there's going to be a great time for opportunity to spread the word of the Lord, to bring those that are on the edge because there's a revival coming. And the Lord says in this song, it says in the words... <clears throat> He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nation prove the glories of his righteousness, the wonders of his life, of his love. God is going to use the nations this year to bring nation with nation against Israel. 
But he's going to use it because it's going to turn around and it's going to backfire on the enemy. And God is going to prove his love once and for all to the world and to Israel. And we're going to see the wonders of his love come through Israel to the world. And as it goes with Israel, so it goes with the world. There are going to be many that are going to come this, this year to the place of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was driving down the mountain in Hamilton, and the Lord said, it's an urgent hour. He said, begin to just proclaim kingdom, kingdom now, kingdom now, kingdom now. And so the Lord spoke to me that this is the season that we just need to begin to say it and step into it. 2013, a year of kingdom advancement, says the Lord. I hear the sound of the marching of the troops, that regular rhythm, but faster and farther and farther and faster. It's a time of intensification, preparation, and advancement. A great focus on the body of Christ raising up, training, and releasing. This will be a season in which those coming to know the Lord will be prepared with greater speed and greater ease. A new generation of warriors that are coming over the hill. Strategies and spirit moves in this generation. It's a breakthrough. Technologies and advancement like never before, but used for kingdom purposes, networking, vision, and kingdom expansion. To cross boundaries of race, denominations, territories, and regions. It's a divine reconnection, kingdom expansion, as I bring those things together to make regional influence, national and national influence, international, says the Lord. There is a boomerang of my spirit going forth, says the Lord, and I am releasing even a fresh wave in the nations where there has already been great moves. Watch and see what I will do among the Muslim nations. The Eastern Asian nation, says the Lord. Even in places where my name was to be cut off, I am raising up a standard of praise, says the Lord, and not afar off. Economic crisis, yes, will abound. But see how I use these ashes to rekindle a flame and have a countercultural movement to reclaim the hearts and lives once cold. Rekindled again and seeking my face, even in the midst of collapse and disgrace. So sound forth the trumpet and shout it aloud. This is not a time to be quiet, but declare that my grace abounds. Even in the face of judgment, raise high a standard of truth. And I will use your boldness to bring forth much kingdom fruit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. He's releasing a new measure of boldness. And I saw the, the man, the eagle, the ox, and the lion. And the Lord says that in this year, it's going to be a time where men are mobilized to work like never before for the kingdom. Propelled by the spirit and the prophetic, that eagle. And with the great power that it's going to advance the kingdom like the lion. And for Eagle Worldwide Ministries, a time of transition, bringing up. Shedding the old and the weights that make low, kingdom strategies and tactics, tactical design, moving proactiveness to line up with the divine. Hallelujah. A releasing from fatigue and a raising up of fresh troops, developing new leaders and supporting those who need it anew, taking new ground in the city with the Kingsway, the jewel highlighted, and even a governmental freeway, says the Lord. On the international side, new doors opening, an ambassadorial anointing released ministry-wide. Flowing down from the top and allowing us to make great strides. Connecting brother to brother, neighbor to neighbor, nation to nation. And an anointing to connect for the kingdom for its advancement and impact, says the Lord. Amen. I hear the Lord saying, my Canada, my Canada, arise, arise. My Canada, my Canada, arise. 
I saw a huge map of Canada mapped out with its provincial borders. Within the map, I saw physical people popping up all over the country. Coming up from the map were thousands of people all of a sudden popping up like popcorn. All kinds of people, red, yellow, black, and white. People from all nationalities, people from all creeds, from all backgrounds, all sizes and all shapes, male and female, young and old. Some were missing eyes, some arms, some missing fingers. Some of them surely looked strange in all their differences. As I continued to gaze upon the people, flames appeared over their heads. All of the people then started to form a circle in an orderly fashion, hand in hand, in unity, starting in the northern part of Canada, surrounding the entire country, a huge circle. The circle was perfect, and it was in order. Then the people started to adjust their positions in the circle, and the circle of people turned in the t into a shape of a huge keyhole. Behind the keyhole appeared two giant doors. They covered the entire nation of Canada. Out of the heavenlies then appeared a giant golden key, and it positions in itself to go into the keyhole. It then moved inside the keyhole, and it turned to unlock the doors. Behind the door was a huge volcano-like hole. It was flashing full of light and it was full of lava and red hot substances that were bubbling up and even running over in the edge in some areas. The uh, substance then blew up like a volcano. It blew up with red lava-like substance and it was blown out of the hole by the force of the explosion. The substance was scattered into the atmosphere. The substance then morphed into hundreds of red bright sparkling maple leaves that gleamed in gold sparkles. The maple leaves were light in weight and were blown out of the hole and scattered gently landing in the nations throughout the entire earth. The first leaf landing in the nation of Greece. And the Lord would say, my people in Canada truly are the leaves of the trees of the healing to the nations. Unity, unity, unity is the key to the healing that will be released across the nations. Healing unto me. Forget about your differences. Forget about your denominations. Forget about your positions. Forget about your heritage. Forget about your traditions. Forget about your age. Forget about your gender. Unify. 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 Unify in your common ground. Unify in me. I am your common ground. Surely, unity is the key that will unlock this worldwide move of my spirit. Arise, Canada, and take your position in my body, in unity, says the Lord. Glory to God. 2013, when I began seeking the Lord, I saw him standing above the church, and he was so heavily moved, and he was weeping. He said, I urge you in this hour to seek my heart for the hour. He wept over Jerusalem, and how he wept over Jerusalem today. He is weeping over his church and the world. It's time to step into what he has called us to do as a corporate body. One vision, his vision, he is saying, for the world to have vision where there is no vision for the church to bring the vision in. Listening to the spirit, being led by the spirit in every area and situation. How will they know that he has sent you? By your love, by your compassion. 2013 is a time to pursue. King David inquired of the Lord and he pursued. And after suffering all that loss in 2 Samuel 5.13, the Lord said pursue and he recovered all. 
Recovering all is recovering those that have been lost. Even within the church, the Lord says, the backsliders, the prodigals, my heart is heavy for them in this hour, says the Lord. 2013 is a year of manifestations of the Lord in action among his people. Watch closely in the spirit. Keep your watch like Habakkuk. He went and he kept his watch and he received the vision and he wrote it down for the appointed time. 2013, a year for my spirit to be loosed in greater measure. You can have as much as you want, says the Lord. Come and drink. Come and dine with me as the heavens are opened. He is going to pour out among many men the refreshing and empowering in a new way. It's going to be a new thing. It's not going to be what you were used to, says the Lord. It cannot even be compared to the past moves of the Spirit, says the Lord. 2013 is a year of conquering. What seemed to be difficult in the past will no longer be difficult this coming year. For I am extending grace, favor over my people. You will not be moved by those past things. But now you will move forward to conquer, says the Lord. Have I not promised to my people the blessings and favor that can only come from God, that only God can release? It will be a year of great announcements across the board, but remember who is in control, God himself, and nothing will happen without him telling his prophets about what is to come. So don't be dismayed, but take courage. Occupy the land in every aspect. Reign, rule with what I have given to you, power, authority, favor, and grace for a year of release, 2013, is a year of gathering. I will gather those of like mind. I will gather those of like heart to accomplish what needs to be done in this hour, says the Lord. God marks each generation with words and ideas that capture the essence of that generation. Here are some words that captured the essence of 2013. Prolific, emerging, roar, manifested sons and daughters, new frontier in the age of awe. In the annals of history, this generation will leave large footprints, a renaissance of a great change. I've been receiving a progressive and an Progressive unfolding vision for the past three years. The latest installment was between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur of uh, this year, and this was the vision. In the first part, I saw a divine courtroom in which His Majesty's right hand struck the judge's bench, and an angel roared, the revolution has started. A shift, a transition took place in heaven, which resulted was felt on earth and in the body of Christ. Two huge angels were dispatched to tip over the bowls of incense, which were full of the prayers of the saints, according to Revelations 8.4. The tip bowls caused a stirring of the waters of Revelation 22, which appeared like a rushing river, flowing out of the throne room into the hungry and thirsty churches here. Job 29.23 says, And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide for the latter rain. The rivers of Revelation 22 stirred loudly, like a mighty cascade, like a voice of many thunderings. The water rose in the hungry and thirsty churches until everyone was submerged under the water like a baptism. Then I saw the waters open up like a Red Sea, and the emerging church arose. The body of Christ was riding on a white horse with a bounce beam in one hand and a sword in the other hand, riding into a new frontier into the age of awe, into the age of glory. I saw the new frontier pressured in four dimensions. I saw the belly of the earth pushing up towards the earth, the surface of the earth, and cap captivity, hellish places like former events in Auschwitz and Rwanda. I saw dead birds falling and dead fish arising from the rivers. I saw pestilence on the rise. Financial derivative marks collapsing, 
fiat currencies, both in Europe and America, will lose its uh, tremendous purchasing power. The American dollar will lose its status as the reserve currency, and the U.S. debt load will suffocate this economy, economy into a prolonged recession. Then I saw the heavens pressing on the earth. It is not perilous time. It's not the days of gloom. It's time for the manifested sons and daughters of God to show his passion, to show his power, to show his purpose and his presence on earth. The church is emerging. It means it's coming into maturity. It's rising of a generation. She will breathe a new spiritual atmosphere in this fullness of times. The body of Christ was on a white horse. A white horse signifies power, grace, beauty, nobility, strength, and freedom. There are men and women who are going to be the brave hearts and the freedom fighters of this generation. Men and women hungry for more of God. Men and women whose imagination is bursting with heavenly possibilities and faith materializing heaven's reality. These are the men and women, the Josephs, the Daniels, the Elijahs of this generation who will be a solution provider for a world that is in calamity and going out of control. That we are the people, we are the people who understand the language of the spirit, the language of dreams, the language of visions, the language of prophetic revelation. These are the days of Psalm 24, where the greater glory will be covering the earth like water covering the sea. Canada is a gateway nation to the world. Canada is a place of great impartation and frontier of new innovations and a breath of new technologies. New cities will be springing up in Canada. Many companies will have headquarters in Canada. I saw this vision and a week later I drove down the Gardner Expressway in downtown Toronto and counted 24 huge cranes, 24 50 plus story high rises as money is flowing into this country from the east from Asia, from India, and from the Far East. The third dimension, I saw the future age pressing into the present age, where the eternity is pressing in. As time is running out, eternity is coming in. I saw the key of David, which represents the manifestation of future dispensation of time into this manifestation Manifested in this present age, I saw increased testimonies of heavenly transport and heavenly visitations. And finally, I saw the fourth dimension. I saw the past age pressing into the present age. I saw Joel 2.25. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. The great locusts, the young locusts, other locusts, and the locust swarm. This is the season for the restoration of all things, including old dreams that have shattered your heart. Like the dry bones of Ezekiel 37, we need to breathe resurrection life and prophesy into our shattered dreams. We are in the fullness of time. And the fullness of time, there's a compression of time. That means in the dream sown in seed form, will manifest in harvest form in the same cycle. I saw in this season many dreams of the heart will be fulfilled and life unspeakable will grip the heart of many. And I'll end it with Psalm 126.1. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nation, the Lord has done a great thing for them. Oh, she did the end of the book, 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 she did the end of the book,
the Lord gave me a vision of this place before we got here. And I saw a dime, like a Canadian dime, in the middle of it. And it was from the floor to the ceiling. And it was transparent. And there were four quarters to it. And I saw it had shifted one place. And the Lord said that he's going to cause a paradigm shift to occur in this season. And God said that this shift is going to bring forth the eyes of awakening. And the Lord said that he has opened up the door of awakening in this nation. And the Lord says that the door of awakening is open in the western region of Ontario. And God said that you have seen a trickle and you have seen a flow, but you have not seen the river. And I saw Pastor Maeve walking through a field, and she had this oxen yoke on her neck, and she was pushing this old-fashioned plow, and she was walking through plowed ground. And I saw her foot hit a box, and when she opened up this box, there was this cloak that was sparkly on the inside. And God told me that there was going to be a new mantle that came upon her, and that there was going to be a new mantle that was going to come upon the ministry. And then I saw a hand flipping through the book that was the Ten General that was written by Robert Salernan. And the Lord would say unto thee, I say press in and don't hold back. The Lord would say unto thee that I ignite the intercessors like never before. The Lord would say unto thee that this is a time to go to war. And the Lord says that the pattern for the hour is going to go from a speedboat to a submarine to a, to a windsurfer. From a powerboat to a submarine to a windsurfer. And the Lord says I'm going to cause thee to move forward with power. And the Lord says when the waves get too big, I'm going to cause thee to go into a submarine and go to war. And the Lord says, I'm going to show you how to ride the wave and the breakthrough. And the Lord says that I'm going to blow the wind of refreshing to you and through you. And the Lord says that there have been people who have been pressing in and been tired. But I blow the dust off of the last season now. And I'm opening up the eyes of understanding like never before, says the Lord. The Lord says that I'm going to increase the anointing of the prophetic upon thee. And the Lord says those who have eyes to hear and, and you know, those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. I say lift your hands up into the heavenlies now. And even now I'm going to loose the prophetic anointing upon thee. I say open up your eyes and open up your ears. He says now is the time to prophesy. Now is the time to speak. Now is the time to open up your mouth and speak the things that I'm saying unto thee. For I'm loosing even the boldness upon thee in this hour, saith the Lord. And I see Brother Russ taking feathers out of his back. And I see him stabbing people. I see him stabbing people and supernatural growth is happening. The Lord says you don't have to try. Just lift up your eyes because I'm increasing the prophetic in Eagle Worldwide. He says, truly, this is the hour of the fullness of the blessing is in the Eagle Worldwide DNA, saith the Lord. Man, that girl's got some fire. <laughs> i got to try and follow it. <laughs> well, this is the word the Lord gave me for 2013. He said, a season of new when all the old has passed away. And an ushering in of the new revelation, new dreams, new desires, new hope, new supernatural signs and wonders. All, all become new in the body. It's time to let go of all your old ways, your thoughts and ways of doing as you've done in the past. For this new will take you further and higher in the spirit, says the Lord. Did, not, did I not say I would do a new thing on the earth? Well, this is it. It's time to make changes. Time to change. Time to forge ahead. For the new will take you further than ever before. Are you ready to embrace the fullness of the new? In this last season, I've been preparing my bride, my body for this new season. Some have said no. Some have stuck in their heels. Others have questioned, unsure of believing it's really me. I have shook and shaken many in the lands. But know one thing, I am in control. And it's time to do things my way. For it is the only way to see things change and change they must. I've been patient long enough, too long. Now it's time to do things my way. For this is the only way for the body to grow and move forward. Wars and more wars. Strife and anger, stubbornness, rebellion has been the way, even in the body. But now is the, earth, now is the time to let it all go and take on the new, for I shall do a new thing on this earth. 
My presence will be known in many different ways in this new year. Greater discernment will be a required necessity to distinguish the sheep from the goats, the tares from the wheat. So draw close, press in, keep pure, stay connected. Do not wander from field to field, from barn to barn as many would. Stay firmly planted, firmly rooted and grounded in my word. For in, it is the way and the truth and the only way to stay strong in me. For many think they are strong but are weak at the knees. Strengthen their knees by prayer and praise. Even now it's not too late to change those circumstances around you. Over the next three months a great harvest can happen if you press in and believe for your jubilee. Family restored, prodigals return, new salvations, new, self, new finances. Press into my glory. Stay strong, stay focused, and see those things come to pass. In six months, many will be pregnant with the new. And in nine months, you shall see many give birth to the new. New ministries, new ideas, new miracles, signs, and wonders. Those things you have, ever, you have never walked in before. For yes, nine months is a significant time for many. So get ready for the new. For it's about to happen through many who are willing to listen, be obedient, be submitted, to authority, the authority I've placed you under. Everyone is accountable to somebody, and all are accountable to me, says the Lord. So as we turn the clocks to the new, walk in the new, embrace the new, what is in the new I want to do in and through you, each and every one of you, says the Lord. This is the word that the Lord gave me for 2013. The Lord said, as 2012 ends, I'm tying up some loose ends. 2012 has been a year of putting off and taking off those things that will weigh my people down. No weapon fo um, formed against my people and my purposes shall stand as I take them into 2013, as I take them into their destiny. There's going to be an ease in the glory. It's going to be a time of settling accounts and clearing the books. 2013 shall be a time of my visitation and of my glory manifesting in the earth. <clears throat> Many have been hidden in my quiver. Some have felt left behind or forgotten. But I tell you, you are not forgotten. Quite the contrary. Now is your time. I am getting ready to shoot out my silver arrows, which have been, I have been saving for such a time as this. It shall be an Isaiah 60 year. Arise, my people, shine, and my glory shall be seen upon thee. There will be fear, terror, and trembling. Many will both fear and wonder at the hour of my visitation. And as the world grows darker, my people will shine like the sun. So I tell you, wake up, look up, and rise up. This is the latter rain. Take your place as I bring you into your destiny. It shall be a time of my favor, a time for my people to rule and reign with me, a time to take your rightful place. My scepter is extended. Go forth in victory and take your rightful place in 2013. Hallelujah. There's a new sound of freedom coming. A new sound of freedom and the captives are being set free. And those people who were captive within the spirit of religion will be set free from that spirit of religion. It, they are going to be set free. And I declare them set free for 2013 right now in Jesus' name. And these, in these last days, the Lord has been given me. I've been sensing this word for 2013. And for those of us who can hear this, who can listen, it is like an invitation. It's like an invitation has been extended. And those of us who have come to this place, like we're together in this place in the spirit, and like we're saying, it's the more of God that we want. We're expectant for. It's the awe of the Lord. And we want to be clothed in that awe. I see us in this huge room, and now it's time for the unfolding of a masterpiece, and it's a timepiece. 
It's a timeless piece. It's a keeper. Yet, it's a treasure and it's a time piece. And I hear the Lord say this is a new day. This is the precise time when the deeper things of God are being revealed. Those things in time which I have compounded up until now, says the Lord. They're going to be loosed and released with, from us, from his people. Now there is this increased desire for doing it God's way. That is being released in a dynamic culture. A holy nation, that's us, a holy nation, globally in the nations. I'm seeing the wheat and the tares more than ever. Those bowing so low that God is going to exalt them to high places. And what are those high places? They are the deeper, intimate rooms of your heart, the heart of the Lord, that you will enter and be transformed and absorb and take with you to release his glory wherever you go, like those time capsules that you take, you know, when you get sick or something, you know, those time-released things. It'll be like time-released glory. Then there are those who won't bend. And a falling away of preconceived false ideologies, false ideas of who they thought they were and who they thought they would be in my kingdom, says the Lord. There has been a sharpening of the gifts this year and a falling away. There's been a sharpening away of the gifts and a ripening of the fruits so that going forward, these tools of gifts and fruits will gain more momentum so that my people who are called by my name will do greater exploits. There are those who will begin to run with the miraculous and will contend for only my word. They will only stand on my word, no matter what the circumstance. My light will be released, and more of my light as transformation continues globally. Waiting on God and not moving ahead will be key to being exactly in step with him. 2013, the year to focus, focus, and move. The year to apprehend. The year to conquer our mountains and conquer our atmospheres conquer terrain, to take much ground, to experience much victory, for I have conditioned you to win, says the Lord. Unity is growing among my people. We've been hearing this tonight. Unity is growing among my people. There are those contending for unity, no matter what. My peacemakers are rising up, and my intercessors are raising up releasing powerful words into the atmosphere for unity. And those who are not going to be a part of unity will not enjoy the benefits of it. It is my commanded blessing. There is a unity being shed abroad along with a great time of repentance, a time of singular vision and focus. The singular vision will enable you to see further and more clearly this will be key, singular vision. You will see a great unity with my people between Canada and many nations, a coming together in the renewing of minds as, as they put my will first. There is a new normal, a new norm, a new norm that is operating in the flow of my Holy Spirit that will break all barriers of timidity and holding back. We will no longer be a people that will hold back anywhere for any reason at any time. For I'm raising a people unto myself that have the power of the Holy Spirit, resurrection power, and are bringing it to the people that need to see it demonstrated in power and in truth. Bring it to the streets. Bring it to the marketplace. Bring it to the restaurants and malls and everywhere you go. The apostolic reformation... And I had a dream, and the Lord showed me a dream of Eagle Worldwide Ministries, and attached to our offices was this restaurant. And it was a restaurant, and it sold a, um, a cooked, a certain kind of food. It was a certain kind of food. I, but I won't say it was Italian, but it was a certain kind of food. <laughs> And Pastor Maeve was at a table, and I had a table, and I could see out this window, and I could see into the window of the offices of, 
of Eagle Worldwide Ministries, and the Lord was showing me that the restaurant was the five-fold ministry. It's a five-fold ministry where people will be coming in to eat this specialty food and taking it with them where they go. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Truth is replacing lies. Action is replacing complacency in this hour. Centers are being birthed and uh, for equipping and sending, equipping and sending, equipping and sending. We're to keep going and going, the forerunners and the runners after them and the wave after them. You have not seen the exceedingly great things I am going to do, says the Lord, yet you believe, yet you build. Just as in the days of Noah, we are building. We are building together, and the blueprint has been revealed. You are a people of faith, and faith will move mountains this year and pull in from the invisible realm provision like you have never seen before. The momentum for this upcoming season we are moving into is moving in and apprehend, press in and contend until, until, until you see that for which you will have apprehended for in my name, says the Lord. Praise God. It is now for 14 minutes, and I had a dream two weeks ago, and we were on the verge of 2013. We were right at the gate. We were right at the gate right now. And in the uh, distance, there was this mansion. It was a big house with a beautiful manicured lawn. But to get there, we had to pass through some ferocious and wild beasts. Caused much fear. The place where we were standing, right at the gate, was the place. It was called, quote, the place where we've been. And beyond the gate and the house and the lawn was called the place we want to be. And that's what 2013 is, the place we want to be. But then I noticed that we were holding a sign, and we were all there, Russ and Maeve and everybody here, we were all at the gate anticipating the lock gate to come open. But I looked around, and I saw signs. I saw people holding 1999, uh, 2011, 1960, 1935, and I realized some people got frozen in yesteryear. And I say to you, Eagle Worldwide Ministries is positioned to enter the next year. Amen. We are excited to go in. We are waiting to go in. We are welcoming 2013. We are not going to be a ministry that stays in yesteryear. We're not going to be a ministry that camps around yesterday's fire. We're going to go and we're going to light some more fires. Amen. It was a great year this year, but there's a lot of great things to come. Amen. The big house was God's house. It was his tabernacle. It was his glory house. Hallelujah. It was the place we want to be. It's the presence of God. It's the place we see. Whoa. The tabernacle moved. It didn't stay stationary. So let's move, saints. Let's go into his presence this year with thanksgiving prayer. Two very brief dreams I had was my wife, Victoria. A week ago, I, she was in the dream. She had these small little water, water bulbs, much smaller, kind of like if you get in an airplane in the olden days, like uh, whiskey, but they have pure water in it. And on the, light, on, the, on the label, it said 1947. She was handing them out to everybody. 1947, 1947 was the year that the Latter-day Reign began and a great revival began. Come on. It, it was a year that Oral Roberts and a healing anointing swept North America and around the world. I believe night, this year is going to be the beginning and the expression of a new wave of God's Healing power, amen. And this water is for anybody in the room that is sick and needs healing. It's for you. 
But more importantly, it's for anybody in this room and anybody in God's kingdom that wants the anointing to operate and move in the gift of healing. Amen? We got to go after it, folks. Thirdly and lastly, two nights ago I had a dream. Very strange dreams. You know we get strange dreams around Eagle Worldwide Ministries. I'm in bed. And all of a sudden, the, all these little yellow chicks jumped up on bed. All these little, little hens, chickens, you know, just little. They're, 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 but they came and laid beside my dog. It was a white dog, little white pet dog. And I believe the Lord was saying, the bed is a place of intimacy and prayer that this year, like never before, is going to become a, a year of prayer and intimacy with the Lord. We're going to go deep into the heart of God. That There's some people that have trouble getting into the God's presence, but it's going to be an ease this year. And as we press into that place of intimacy, we're going to see birthings. We're going to see multiplication. We're going to see growth. The white dog was purity, and the white dog was the Holy Spirit, our best friend. As we press in and hear his voice this year, saints, it's going to be awesome. It's a time for signs, wonders, and miracles, for multiplication. It's a time for new birth and for birthing. Finally, I believe 2013 is a year of separation. It's a time of separation. I believe the real church of Jesus Christ is going to break free from the spirit of religion. Time of separation for that spirit of religion. I believe also the real church of Jesus Christ is going to break free of the world. We have encountered, like the Israelites of old, the first few plagues with the world. But now there's coming a separation in the land. We're going to be living in the land of Goshen where the blessings of God are going to start being noticed by people. Our co-workers, our neighbors, our family are going to begin to see that we are blessed. That we are favored by God. That God is with us. And they're going to start saying, how can we get in on this? I believe it's a time for people to come to Christ like never before. I believe it's a great year of opportunity for those seeking the heart of God and for the revelation of God. Amen. You ready to enter the gates? You ready to run through the gates? I saw the man with the keys and he's coming down to open it in 10 minutes. <laughs> Glory to God. What a wonderful to hear the word of the Lord and the heart of God for our hour. And you can see the way that the thread of what he's saying to us kind of was weaved in just about every one of those words and the way he drew them together. And you know what? Grab a hold of that part that applies to you and to your heart. Grab a hold of that part of the vision that God has for the new year for you. This is a year of recovery. But you know what? We've got to get up and put our hand to the plow, and we're going to recover it all. We've got to pursue if we're going to really recover. So we've got to be strong. We have to be bold. I want to thank Kareem and Linda and their whole team, uh, the, the ladies that put together all the wonderful decorations, the food, all the guys that were outside. Let's give everybody a great big hand that was involved in all that. Wonderful. We love you guys and appreciate you. You know, we talked about a lot of people tonight that were donors and supporters of Eagle Worldwide Ministries, but there is one that's really in our midst who continually stands as a person in Marketplace Ministry who has been there with us through thick and thin not only involved in helping us at the King's Way and the Six Nations and the Center for Excellence, but also taking teams out, doing wounds to worship. Let's give Ellen Campbell and the Canadian Center for <laughs> Abuse Awareness, her team, great big hand. Helena that goes out, they go into the prisons, they go into some real hard places, you know, bringing the gospel and bringing healing to the hearts of the people. Uh, Pastor Miguel is uh, somewhere around right now, but the Lord has been moving on his heart that January is to be a month of fasting and prayer. And most of us know, uh, most of us have been hearing from the Lord that it is that time. 
So we want to make the entire month of January a month for fasting and prayer. We want you to press into God for like a 21-day Daniel. If, you're, if your health is not right, maybe you want to do something that has to do with the media fast or, or maybe a shopping fast. I said a shopping fast. God, Pastor May, come up here and stand with him. Karabarandai. Glory to God. You notice we, we touched the heart of God when he said the Italian food. I know that the cuisine in heaven is Italian. Hey. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's no Italian We're gonna on the Daniel. <laughs> no Italian. No Daniel on that. But the entire month of January, let's really press into God in fasting and prayer. And you know what God's ordained for you to do. You know, we're not ones to saddle anyone with a fast. You just press into God. And however it leads you in fasting and prayer, he'll meet you in that place and give you the grace to fulfill that fast. So whenever it is, maybe some of you have family functions and things already on the agenda. Uh, but you know what? As soon as that comes to a standstill, press into God and really press into him for what's going to happen in 2013. It is definitely the year of restoration, reconciliation, uh, of the prodigals coming home, yeah. of recovering the things that were stolen and yeah. taken. I'd like to have Helena and her team come up and worship a little bit. We're going to stop her right there in the last couple of minutes. We're going to stop her in the last moment and do a little countdown. And uh, you can get with your significant someone and usher in the new year or usher out the old year. Just want to let you know also that all of the words that came forth tonight will be on our website. So I saw some of you furiously writing. Don't be concerned that you didn't hear it all or you can't remember it because they'll all be posted on the website. And whoever has a word, make sure you email it to miguel at eagleworldwide.com.
Who has a countdown? Who's got a countdown? Who's got a countdown? Who's got a countdown? Oh, he is good. He is good. He's coming. He is coming. His goodness is coming. there's something in your heart, just lift it up to the Lord. We're winding down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! Lord, you are. 